a little tip for those of you who live where there's lots of snow. And with El Nino, that's pretty much everybody. <laughs> now, to protect the eaves troughs from getting the ice in them there, you can get these uh, expensive kind of special coils or heating coils, really, and they go right onto the roof like that. But I say, why bother when you already got Christmas lights up there? <laughs> After New Year, get up there, take all your Christmas lights out, and replace them with pennies. <laughs> and these things heat up, it won't melt all the ice anyhow. It's eighty dollars and makes sense. You know, you might want to check the fine print on your fire insurance policy before you try this. It's the Red and Green Show. <laughs> and now here's a man who gets so much in the gold that it got up and went. Your host and hero, the my uncle Red Green. up the lodge this week. Possum Lodge is about to be declared an official religion. A, 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 a religion? Oh, pray tell. Oh, come on, Harold. <laughs> hey, it makes sense, doesn't it? We have weekly meetings, we have members, and we have certain unique beliefs that separate us from the rest of society. <laughs> yeah. And society thanks you for that, but why, why do you have to be a religion? Because that makes us a registered non-profit organization. <laughs> Religions can do things that other clubs can't. <laughs> what, perform weddings? Bingo. Oh, no! Yeah. No, no, who'd want to get married here? Oh, no. Well, you can't even walk up the aisle without tripping over dead bears and oily car parts. No, no. <laughs> no don't. Not weddings, Harold. Bingo, you know, bingo. You're going to play bingo? Bingo. We're going to make a fortune here, Harold. You're going to charge people to come to Possum Lodge to play bingo? Bingo. Oh. <laughs> and he thought I was stupid. <laughs> Bingo. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's time to play the Possum Lodge word game, and today's grand prize allows you to call the sexiest movie star you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and that grand prize, a shiny new quarter. <laughs> and playing for this quarter with my Uncle Red is Mr. Kevin Black, city slicker turned possum laker. Welcome. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Black, you have 30 seconds to get my Uncle Red to say this word. Flip. <laughs> Flip. All right. Oh, okay. And go. Okay, Mr. Green. Uh, let's say you buy a piece of real estate. Overpay. <laughs> no, you're going to sell it for more than you paid for it. Now, what is that called? A miracle. <laughs> No, all right, let's say you buy something, yeah. and then you sell it for a profit before you even have to pay for it. What's that? The 80s. <laughs> You're almost out of time, Mr. Black. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Mr. Green, let's say I buy something, then I immediately sell it for a profit. What have I done? Undermine the basic fabric of society. <laughs> <laughs> You're... You're quite hopeless, but I think you know that, and I do believe that quarter should be mine. Well, I'll flip you for it. Very good. Under the B, cash. Under the I, I'm rich. Under the N, and you thought I was stupid. Under the G, G, look at all the money. And under the O, Oh, yeah. <laughs> you made all that money from bingo? Yeah, Harold. We only had two bingos called, so we get to keep the pots, eh? Old man Sedgwick jumped up and yelled, Odd nib, but his card was upside down. <laughs> so how are you doing on the registration form there, Harold? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. The, the, uh, the government just has a few more questions about your new religion for their files. All right. Um, all righty, uh, they, they want to know if you have a name for your new religion. I suggested God help us. <laughs> The Sacred Church of the Possum. Sacred Church of the Possum. Yeah. All right. Do you, have, do you have a patron saint? Saint Bernard. <laughs> and uh, how do you feel about life after death? 
Oh, I don't know. I tell you what, I believe in life before death. <laughs> so you just, I don't care, but you just fill out any way you want. In fact, you can make yourself a sacrificial virgin if you feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a deacon. What? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, like a saintly presence. Oh, you know, yeah. like, a, like an angel that shines a light for all to see. A beacon of hope for the, for the meek and the downtrodden. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call myself Deacon Beacon. <laughs> hey, you could answer the phone. Don't be freaking. This is Geek and Deacon Beacon speaking. <laughs> In the meadow and the old red rooster calls. Oh. There's a lot of condensation where the roof used to join the wall. There's a wetness in my mattress and puddles on the dresser. The lesson here is don't make beer if your tank can't hold the pressure. <laughs> you know, in his lifetime, my dad had a lot of pretty distinctive cars. The old DeSoto there with the big fins on her. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, the big heavy Studebaker. Remember them? Pointed at both ends. Just like Dad. <laughs> oh, man. I love the Corvair. And the fancy trim on the side. Another dent in the roof every time you flipped her. <laughs> now, these things, the gas mileage was brutal on them there. And the body had rust out every three years on her. And uh, any collision over 10 miles an hour, of course, was fatal. But you just didn't care, you know? <laughs> of course, nowadays, the way they're making the cars, they all look the same. This is because uh, they got computers designed them, eh? So they're aerodynamic and fuel efficient and all that stuff. But hey, after you do a little bit of shopping or maybe pack for a trip or something, that whole theory goes right out the window. Of course, the fundamental problem with this is the message that all cars should be the same. How long is it going to be before they start saying that all people should be the same, eh? Then a lot of us are in trouble, especially me. To me, people are distinctive individuals, and their vehicles should reflect that. So this week, on uh, Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how you can customize your car so that it'll stand out on the road, in the parking lot, and in the police compound. Let's start with the front end. See, I, I kind of got a piece of garden hose. This has been sitting on here, out in the sun, for about three days, and it's actually taken on the shape of the front end of the car. Hey, hey. So now this becomes our pattern, hey, our jig. So we can cut something out, make a little piece of trim that'll go right on and fit perfectly onto the front end of the car. What are we gonna use? <laughs> Don't get ahead of me now. All right, I got my pattern all traced out on the canoe now. All I have to do is cut her off. And for that, I'm gonna use one of these uh, fancy little coping saws, just ideal for cutting curvy lines. Saw seems to be coping a little better than I am. <laughs> ah, she's really starting to take shape, isn't she? And how about this little nifty feature, huh? Hideaway headlights. Actually, these are just pails. Yeah, you cut them out and leave the bottom in there, see? So under normal conditions, the headlight is hidden. But uh, as you get going, the wind grabs here and just lifts this baby right up and exposes the headlight, see? So the faster you go, the better you can see, huh? So if you're driving at night and the visibility's not too good, just speed up. <laughs> By the way, these hinges are 100% duct tape, and it's called the Himmelman hinge. Uh, Himmelman is actually a lodge member. He was, he was actually by the lodge the other day, but the artificial knees have not worked out so well. In the, in the hot weather, they stick to the inside of his pant legs. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Himmelman, let's do something to the back end. All right, now, this is actually just an ironing board, but I'm using it as a spoiler, hey? <laughs> I feel spoiled. Well, something is spoiled, that's for sure. And you see these fins? Canoe paddles. <laughs> that's all it is, yeah. How about this? See my roll bar here? You know what that is? It's a kid's swing, huh? Amazing what a person can do. You know something that bugs me, too, about the new cars? They come with no chrome on them, huh? Fully loaded, no chrome, none. Well, I don't go for that. So I'm going to add some chrome to this baby. And you can get a kind of a, a tape, like it's kind of a, I guess, a kind of a mylar, or I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it, it's like duct tape, only silverier. Later. 
Why, there's nothing like Chrome to create an image, eh? And I bet this is burning a pretty good image into that TV camera. But that's just how easy it is to let people know that you're different. You're not one of them. It'll make you feel good, and it'll make them feel even better. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. talk to you guys we're going to have to face a problem when you get older I'm not talking about extra ear and nose hair <laughs> I'm talking about the inability to remember special occasions <laughs> the day will come when suddenly you realize that last year you forgot her birthday your anniversary Valentine's Day and Christmas <laughs> uh, I know nobody remembers your special occasions do they hey eh? Opening day of bass season? <laughs> Anybody buy you a bag of worms? <laughs> you can live with their insensitivity, but they can't handle yours. And right now you're thinking, wasn't it about a year ago that you got into trouble for something or other? You know what that means? You got a special occasion coming up, don't you? And you have no idea what it is. Do you? <laughs> well, neither do I. But here's what you do. Go out now and buy a gift. Now. Right. Wrap it up, hide it in the garage. Now. Get a flowery card that just says, I love you on it. All right. Now just wait around for the day in question. You'll be able to tell because she'll be ticked off with you. <laughs> she'll get into the sighing, tapping her foot on the floor, saying stuff like, you know, I could have married any of your friends. <laughs> What you do then, go get the gift, bring it out, just yell, surprise. Just a surprise like that. It'll make you look like a hero. You might even get to sleep in your own bed. <laughs> and maybe not right away. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. You are in such trouble, mister. Just stay calm, Harold, all right? If a little technicality on the lodge being an organized religion, I need to be a bit more organized, I guess. Yeah, yeah. government says you're not even a religion. Says you're not even a pagan ritual. <laughs> and you gotta have a gaming license to run a bingo. Now we all gotta go to jail and eat bland food and marry our own gender. Yes, yes. Harold, what? don't panic, okay? We're not done yet. Wow. Well, I had a... I had a meeting with the church elders. We sacrificed a couple of beers. And, uh, we came up with a plan, what we call our holy doctrine. All right? Okay, okay. The okay. government boys are coming tonight to look at our bingo game, and all we gotta do is convince them that it's actually a church service. Okay? Oh, oh. Yeah. How are you gonna do that? Well, uh, we got sinners, that's a good start. Yeah, and, uh, we got oh. We figure we'll have some confessions. You know how the guys love to brag. <laughs> all we need now is just a sermon to top that off, Harold. Oh, you're not going to tell your story about the bird and the manure again, are you? Oh, no, 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 not me, Harold. You're the deacon. You'll be doing the sermon. Me? Yeah. No way! Yeah. No! Yes, uh -uh. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. I'm excommunicating myself from this cult. No, 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 no. You should have thought of that before you took your vows, young man. Don't worry, Harold. I, I can help you through this. We'll be fine. Oh, Uncle Red, we're not going to be able to fake out these government people. Yeah, we, Harold, they're from the tax department. They've never been to church either. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. This is the part of the program where we like to examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> That's <good>. <laughs> <laughs> And joining me, Uncle, today is Ranger Gord. <laughs> Alrighty, okay, here we go, letter number one. Dear experts, Ranger Gord is the best person on your show. <laughs> he is down to earth yet uncommonly brilliant. <laughs> All the women at Possum Lake must be crazy for him. Uh, Gord doesn't need anybody to be crazy for him. <laughs> I think there's more there, Harold. <laughs> Oh, uh, there is no one better than Ranger Gord on the show, is there? No, I don't think so. Uh, I doubt it. Uh... <laughs> Red, what's your feeling on that? Hmm? Who wrote that letter, Harold? 
Okay, not really the perfect crime, Gord. Maybe you shouldn't have signed it. <laughs> you know, that's not necessarily my letter, Red. Some deranged person may have wrote it and put my name to it. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> That's a scary looking thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you doing, Bill? What do you got there? A little, uh, it's a funny little hammer. Kind of a pickaxe, kind of a paintbrush. What's that for, Bill? What's going on? Oh, boy. Well, let's uh, get up early in the morning to get dressed, I'm thinking. Anyway, uh, Bill had a, wow. Holy what's going on? I don't quite understand what's happening here, but I'm gonna stand back a little bit. What do you got there? Oh, my gosh. Oh, geez, look, he passed a stool. Okay. What, what's going on? What is this all about? Oh, I get it. Oh, it's like an archaeology. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. No thanks. I'm going to just kind of... Oh, relax. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> well, there you go. That'll be my job. I'll sit in the chair, Bill. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you got to dig a hole. Right? Oh, you go dig a hole, and you call me when the hole's done. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Boy, is it. You dug a hole yet, Bill? What are you doing there? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow, that's a Oh, hi, everybody. Yeah, hi, Red. Look, I dug a yeah, hole. I, really wow, great. holy okay, smoke. Here, here. Look, 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 look. Oh, and he's this. marked all the layers. There's the 90s. Yeah, that's. Uh, what was that? Oh, it's a cassette. They got a cassette tape there. Oh, the 80s. Oh, yeah, I remember the 80s. Yeah, Go and then the 70s. Oh, it's an 8 track. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, boy, oh, boy. Wow, wow. 60s, it's a record. You got everything. Is that real? Got any more yeah, stuff there? Uh, yeah, there Funny how it goes in layers, isn't yeah. it? What do you got? Oh, more stuff. Oh, that looks like. Are these really artifacts, do you think? Oh, yeah, it's a piece of a bike. Oh, yeah. These are not real. This is a junk pile. Oh, come on up. Come on up. And I'll come down. There. All right. Boy, oh, boy, this is, uh, this is an odd feeling to be down in a... Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Oh. Come listen to my story. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. When Bill thinks that he's found some uh, bones of some animal or something. There's just an oil can. Just an oil can. That's, that's the way my life goes sometimes. And, uh, there we go. Dad, no, look at Bill, that. I don't it's think that's... Dinosaur. No, it's I not a prehistoric a animal. It's just... A, it's, no, it didn't... No, it didn't. No, it just... No. No, I don't... I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. No. No, 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 no. Watch your step. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we thought that was pretty much the end of the day, but when he landed, he found something kind of unusual. Maybe onto something here. Maybe onto something. Oh, my gosh, it's a, it's a license plate there, Bill. It's a license plate. Yours to discover. What would that be? My God. What do we got over here? Oh, it's a headlight, and it's... Boy, there's something. Yeah, something going on. All right, I'll be right down. Look out, look out. Don't catch me. Don't catch me. Don't help me, Bill. Well, look. Another headlight. Two headlights in a, in a license plate. You know what I think it is? I think it's a car. Yes, it is. Wow, well, I got all the dirt off there, and I got the oil poured into her there. And here's something, you know, 25 years later, the engine still runs. Transmission still works. Here's something we learned. The brakes are shot. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'll get it. 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 This is a special feature of the show we call You and Your Animal, hosted by local animal control officer, Ed Frid. Welcome, Ed. Fred. I'll tell you, the, uh, the, the youngsters love, love these animal segments. So what did, you, what did you bring for us today? A couple of creatures. All right, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, first, uh, a snake. Wow. Hey, I'm impressed, Ed. I thought you were afraid of snakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't let on, eh? <laughs> okay, so this is the largest snake we get in North America, okay? Oh. This is an indigo snake, and boy, <laughs> have we got a big specimen. <laughs> Literally, you see the size of this baby. <laughs> I guess I forgot to bring them. Ed, 
there's uh, something, something moving under your shirt there. Huh? Is there any chance the snake got in inside your shirt at all? Oh. 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 I don't like the way this is going. All right, sorry. No, no, wait, you know what? You know what? We'll use a little bit of bait. Just, uh, what do they eat? Mice. Little furry or mice. Okay, I, I got a piece of cheese. I'll put that down. Now no, look, it. We'll, we'll get them to go down. Oh, yeah. Just stay still. Can you stand still? Yeah, oh yeah. Right. I can't believe you didn't notice you had a snake in your shirt, Ed. Well, you know, you get busy. <laughs> you know, I can't be checking my clothes for snakes every five minutes, but but I think I might start. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> Oh. Ah. All right, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's the end of that segment, isn't it? Brought a tarantula. <laughs> yeah, that was religious persecution. There's no question about it. Unbelievable. I can't believe the God-fearing lodge members attacked a man of the cloth. <laughs> well, your sermon didn't help, Harold. You know, you don't warm up a congregation by calling them the spawn of Satan. <laughs> you didn't help matters either with your phony commandments. Thou shall not tip. I, I just thought the bingo thing was a great idea, that's all. <laughs> Under the R! Wrong! Uh, <laughs> all right, Harold. I was out of line, but you have to forgive me. Uh, why? It's your job. You're the freaking deacon. <laughs> Meantime. Yeah, you go ahead, your worship. I'll be right down. Hey. Okay. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I, I think I'm in need of a miracle. Perhaps a laying on of hands. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Likes it best when he's sitting for the meeting. All rise. Quando <laughs> omni fungus oratari. Sit down. Okay, we just got a quick announcement here, okay? Now that we're no longer a religion, <laughs> we must cease and desist on the practice of taking every Friday and Monday off as religious holidays. <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are still on, though.